Hello everybody, I'm Oliver from Lenses.com and let's go for a new tip. In the previous video, we talked about how to use instances to create new versions of your model. In this one, we're going to continue with the same subject, but this time we're going to use shape keys. A shape key, for those of you who don't know, is used to store a different position of the vertices than the original one, so then we can uh, pick a percentage of how much of that shape key we want. Okay, so we, you're going to see it better when we start using them. So let's go for it. First, let's enable the display keys. Okay, I forgot it. All right, so let's go here to the mesh options, mesh tab. And uh, this is a quick tip inside a quick tip, yo dog. Uh, here, uh, you can see that I have two vertex groups and this is um, vertex groups can be used just for storing uh, selections that you know that you will need in the future. So in this case, I wanted to save the work of having to select the head and the hand and all that. So I have them here stored in vertex groups. So now I can very quickly select the head or the hand. You're welcome. Um, okay, so let's go for the shape keys. Um, we create the shape keys right here under the vertex uh, vertex groups. We can click on the plus button and we will create a shape key. But this is not a usual shape key. The first key that you create will be the basis. It will store the, the original state of the mesh. So this one has no value or anything like that. Okay, the second one you create, this is a shape key. And you can see it's called key one and it has a value that you can change from here, okay, right here from the list or under here in the uh, slider. Also, you have different options that you can tweak, but I'm not going to enter into that because this is a quick tip. And if I enter into all that, which I'm tempted to do, it will stop being a quick tip and it will be a slow tip, which I don't want. Okay, I already lost some 30 seconds doing that stupid joke. All right, let's uh, keep going with it. Uh, so we have it, this value at zero. Okay, this one will be the big hands, for example. So big hands, we can double click and name, rename a shape key. We go into the edit mode and we will select the hands. So we select this. I have here in the tools region, I have the X mirror option enabled, okay? That's why the changes I do in one side of the mesh will reflect into the other. Okay, so we're going to scale this with the proportional editing tool and move it down and scale it again, and move it down and scale it again to make the hands really big. All right, here is an interesting thing. Uh, here, what we are seeing is only the effect of this shape key because we have it selected. If we select a different one, we you can see that we can switch between them. I will get back to this uh, issue in a moment. Okay, now we are going to create another shape key. This will be a big head. So we go into edit mode again, we select the head and we make it bigger. We bring this up a bit more. Okay, that's cool. So now you can see that if we go to object mode, we lose the changes that we made. This is because the value of these shape keys is zero. If we change it, you can see how we can pick a percent of this effect and we can mix them, okay? The big head and the big hands until we are happy. Now, let's say that we are happy with these measures and we want to also change the torso, but we want to change it accordingly to these other shape keys that we just created. So we can create a new shape key Go here and select a big torso. Okay. We go inside the edit mode and, uh, well, we can make the torso bigger, but we are not seeing the effect of the other shape keys. For seeing it, we have to go inside those shape keys. And uh, keep in mind that regardless of the value that you have here in object mode, these shape keys will always represent inside edit mode the 100% of this effect, okay, when you select the shape key. So let's go to Big Torso and click on this option. And this option will make Blender show you the effects, the mix of the uh, percentage that you have for every shape key in the model. But before doing that, to show you another thing, I'm going to just select some these two vertices and make this torso a bit bigger. Okay. So now when I select this option, you can see that we can see now the bigger head and the uh, hands here. And it's uh, also very nice because we can even keep tweaking the percentages from the edit mode, which is great. However, if you noticed it, take a look at the torso when I enable that option. The torso disappears, why is that? Because even though we have it selected, the torso is at 0%, and this is not what we want. We have to, want to put it at 1%, 100%, so we can just keep tweaking it until we are happy with it, something like that, okay. 
So now this will be like the final version of our character. Let's say that we are happy with this. Now we want to apply it. We have basically two options for doing this. One option that I really like is that we can click on this option here and uh, create, a, let me check it here, create a duplicate for editing. This will create a new a duplicate of this object with the applied shape keys deformations in the 3D cursor. Keep in mind that the origin of this mesh is in the hips. That's why it was created with this uh, the floor. Okay, the origin is right there. So it's the exact same model, but the shape keys have been applied. This is great for making different variations of the same character. If you want an army of orcs, for example, uh, similar to in the Lord of the Rings. You can make another, you know, one with bigger arms, another with bigger legs and bigger torso, things like that, and keep duplicating it to generate different versions of the model. This is great, uh, but let's say that we want to keep this original model, okay, and just apply the shape keys. We have a problem here, and is that in other areas of Blender we could use this, and if we delete some information, it will keep being as it is in the current moment. This doesn't happen with shape keys for one reason. If we go here and just delete all the shapes, you can see that, uh, yeah, it uh, keeps being as I had it. Looks okay, but check this out. If we enter into the edit mode, wait, not that button, this one, it resets. And uh, why does that happen? Well, because even though we deleted all the shape keys, let's go back, Blender still knows that the basis was the original shape okay, of the model. So when we delete all of them, when we enter in edit mode, it's like Blender will refresh the model and will find out that the original stage uh, st state of the model was this one, the basis. So we want basically to replace the basis. And the way we do this is by deleting it. When we delete the basis, the next key, in this case, the big hands, will become the basis. You can see how the um, big hands now has uh, <laughs> this interesting effect uh, for some reason, but it has no value, okay? We can, we can keep just deleting these um, this, uh, shape keys, okay? Until we arrive to the last one. And the last one, you can see that it includes all of the changes that we did in the previous shape keys. So in this case, now uh, this becomes the basis, which means that we can safely delete it. And when we enter in the edit mode, this will become the final state of the mesh, the original state. So this is it for this quick tip. I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, stay tuned and subscribe because I will explain some inconvenience and some pros and cons of using this method as well as the previous one so you can uh, work around it or know at least the limitations that they have. So stay tuned and happy blending. Mm -hmm.